Hello everybody. So, finally we have come to the end module lecture 20. So, uh, we, we, have, we are still with the design of uh, RCC TV bridge. What we would like to do here? Um, I have told Ricker mainly I have covered that one say design principles though we thought actually solve problem, but I shall supply that problem as a separate PDF file so that you can go through it and then we can discuss also. Now coming to this one here in reinforced concrete, this is lecture 20. Coming to here that your reinforced concrete, one is very very important that is actually detailing of reinforcement. There is one is important here that I can say, say primary reinforcement. This is one, another one I can say we call it distribution steel, let us say secondary. This is also equally important. But I mean to say this reinforcement is such that if you just have any problem or less it will collapse, it will fail. But this one there is a possibility there will be cracks other things will be developed, but it will not fail that way we are considering here. So, coming to this one whenever we are talking say solid slab bridge. Then if you take the cross section, this is the depth, maybe say depth sometimes maybe say 800 millimeters say something like that it may come for 10 meter I am talking. Then obviously and this is simply supported. So, your objective that you have to provide the reinforcement and that reinforcement will be provided, you will have reinforcement at the top also at bottom, at one, but this is your main reinforcement like that. So, I require spacing of reinforcement. and number 2 diameter of reinforcement. Whatever it is that your maximum spacing other things we make it here. That means, here if you make this depth less, there is a possibility you will find out the reinforcement spacing is very close. I personally never give less than not less than 100 millimeter. It should be always greater than maximum 100 millimeter. Never. Yes, this is the one you should first follow that 100 millimeter not never less than that. That is the one first thing you should make that one. somebody can argue that why not 90 millimeter like that, why not because the thing is that if you are having that as per code codal provision you are having say maximum uh, and then minimum spacing will be your say um, that uh, maximum size of course aggregates or maximum diameter of bar whichever is um, maximum. We all know that, but at sight you are having not a single bar like that. There are so many bars, they are overlapping of bars like that we are having. So, in that case 
if you make less than this particular one, then you will find out it will be very, very difficult that it will be a jungle of reinforcement and finally, whatever design you do, finally, what will happen? You will not be able to get a uh, that proper uh, uh, that your say casting of your concrete that your and you will get voids other things and so you will not get the required strength. So, this is very, very important here that this is that is why I am telling this one primary one. There are certain secondary reinforcement also will be there at side reinforcement will be there, the top also reinforcement will be there all those things. To keep the top reinforcement we require certain kind of chair type of thing like this over that actually your reinforcement this is we call it a chair. So, this one actually you are not designing actually this particular is coming here. Now, whenever you are giving these chairs here, so we can put it here in a proper form that sometimes we can provide the shear reinforcement also. Though in slab, slab means actually call it actually loosely we can call it that particular slab means without shear reinforcement that is the one. But sometimes we provide shear reinforcement in the solid slab also um, at least near the end. Then the next thing is that main reinforcement at span and main reinforcement at support. That means, this is the one to reinforcement that means, there will be a cartel of reinforcement here, cartel of reinforcement because why bending moment is less here. So, you should have certain kind of idea that where you will cartel the reinforcement. You will find out that whenever we consider that one say your solid slab, I am drawing the plan. This is say traffic direction. Here you are having the support. We find that reinforcement cartel in number of places, one in the middle portion, one can say I shall provide here to here, then I shall provide certain portion here to here, then I shall provide certain portion here to here. Almost roughly you can say if you draw the bending moment, though because of live load it will be different, but anyway just let me tell you because of the dead load that I have done BMD in tension side. So, that is why I have done in the bottom you will find out in different books that it is done in the upper direction, but I prefer that one bending only because it will directly give you idea the deflection shape also. This one for the dead load only say but for live load you will have different one. Now, what I mean to say I can have subtle cartelment that means, I can provide up to this, up to this, then up to this, up to this another one we can provide and that way we can go ahead. So, that is the one we can provide alternatively you can make only one cartelment that means, here whatever I can do very interesting thing that this reinforcement I shall provide say up to this alternate reinforcement it will go other side. That means, both the bars having the same length only thing it is staggered one is coming this way that means, I am having that one the next bar will go like that and the other bar will go like that. Now, whenever we are having that one more cutlement, so that cutlement at what sequence you will give that one also be, uh, to be very important. That means, we are providing something like that here. So, that at what interval you are providing. So, that is why um, that uh, sometimes that uh, you would say the saving that one say reinforcement other things they go for one more cutlement. So, this is first one you are having one together then next one like that like that here, but here generally we can have say. Uh, you make at cutlement such a way that whatever spacing we are having here this spacing and then 
this spacing the double of that then it is very easy to do it. It is say 100 then it is 200 like that if it is 125 then it is 250. So, you, you can cut it in that particular one that means this is the section you have to check where that bend moment will resist and that particular one you can find out here. This is the thing that we do it and then we give side reinforcement other things also we give it actually because it is 800 millimeter that one uh, is a heavy um, that you would say that uh, um, section. So, you have to provide side reinforcement also then you have to provide that one to um, that keep that your say top reinforcement in proper position that also then also you have to give a provide chairs other things and that is why I told you since you are providing chairs. So, you can take the advantage for that you can provide it as a link as a shear reinforcement that also um, you can consider here that is the thing regarding slab that way we can find out and then you are having that your bar marking other things we can do it. So, this comes under schedule of reinforcement we call it actually your that uh, this one here schedule of reinforcement. Please note that particular one uh, I am not talking actually bar bending schedule there is another term is there bar bending schedule that is the one length of the bars everything you have to mention because that is not the designer's um, task. Here we mention that one says schedule of reinforcement that what type of bar you are giving when um, how it looks like, but you are not giving the quantity bar bending schedule actually it means that you are calculating the actual quantity of the bars also and which is not the uh, task of designer. So, that is why you have to provide that schedule of reinforcement that you have to provide. Coming to the next one before going for summarize and closure of this course, let me just spend some time on that you are say or um, your um, what is called this um, RCC T beam that one we let me tell. This is the span dimension like this and we provide here that main reinforcement again longitudinal reinforcement whatever it is we provide that is your say main reinforcement. Now, let me show you one figure then it will be clear that how it comes. This one you can see that how it comes here this particular one to give you idea that this is the one that how the reinforcement comes and you are having different numbers say for example, this is 1, this is 2, this is say here we are having say 4, 6 whatever the bars are there 8 D, 7 A, 7 B, 7 C all those things because if you mention the uh, bar description so here then the drawing will be too much crowded and here also just see this one it is written deck slab reinforcement refer separate drawing A C it will be A C P A R A T separate drawing that particular one they have to do that means that particular one will be given in a separate one. This is a particular section which is given as say in section CC which is at the middle or mid section and these are you can see your reinforcement here that you are can consider here reinforcement here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5 and then 3 that means here 15 plus 3 18 that means you are providing this 18 that you are providing here reinforcement that you are providing. This is your main reinforcement which will get it from the bending moment whatever you have computed from dead load, live load all those things whatever you are computed for a particular gutter and the main span or mid span you will find out that that is the one that is why I am telling this is your primary that means first one you are having that overall depth that you have to get it will help you to know the momentum resistance due to concrete and second part is that you would say um, steel reinforcement that you have to provide so that the structure will not fail. These are called side reinforcement since the section is too big. So, obviously, you have to provide certain side reinforcement also further you are having stirrups also. 
So, this particular one we are having here just to show you here this is in the mid span and this one we are getting here it is uh, becoming white. So, that is why that it may it may not be eye soothing, but anyway just to bear with this situation for this particular one this is at the support. So, whatever you can see here there are two vertical lines and here you are having one vertical line this is another vertical line this is another vertical line this is another vertical line. So, that line also shown here here that means this is four legged stir up whereas, here it is shown this is two legged. Similarly, this bar how it looks like the bar looks like this the bar looks like this. So, those information also you have to give. Now, whenever we are having this information say now here that here 3 was missing the 3 is here 1, 2, 3 then 5, 7, 7 c and you see that one the reinforcement is curtailed here. So, that means, here we are having only 10 here you are having 18 and here you are having 10 that means, there is a cartel of reinforcement here. Now, where shall I get this information? So, where shall I get this information that what is number 1, number 2, number 3 those things we get it here that is called actually schedule of reinforcement. So, we can take it here this schedule of reinforcement that we can get it here for each of them that is the main reinforcement and that is why you can find out please uh, little bit careful and be attentive. So, that you can find out 7 32 tor 7 a 32 tor 5 numbers 7 b 32 tor 3 numbers 7 c 32 number spacer bar at that means, now whenever you are providing layers different layers of bar. So, it will fall. So, that is why you have to provide in between you have to provide the spacer bar. So, that the bars will not come down and that one at what spacing you have to provide that one you are providing at 1000 center to center that means, 1 meter center to center you are providing that. Then you are providing 4 legged stirrups 16 to 4 legged stirrups you are providing 16 to 2 legged stirrups you are providing. So, like that all the information you have to give it here and this is called that schedule of reinforcement that is why I have told you that this information you are giving that one because that bar mark whatever you are providing there that one I do not want to we do not want to make it crowded because if you make it crowded it will be very difficult to understand that oh, if you keep on writing so many things then you will be very uh, actually you can see that uh, how difficult it is that current figure. Now, if you further you make it it will be further difficult that is why you give the bar marking and with this bar mark we just make it here and this one we call schedule of reinforcement. Bar bending schedule means you will have additional information quantity other things also will come which is not the job of a designer that one will be done by the contractor they will do it for the real detailing of the um, that you are say reinforcement that one. One more thing I would like to say this particular one here that superstructure will be done by a may be done by a separate agency substructure and foundation may be done by a separate agency. I have told possibly earlier that bearing will be done by separate agency and not only that reinforcement caging also that is done by separate agency that casting of that we have reinforced concrete that concreting will be done by another agency, but reinforcement caging that in bridges there are experts that those who will do the reinforcement caging only then that particular one according to drawing they will do it. So, these are the things actually we make it here. So, coming to the now the last part of this particular lecture as well as for this course let us uh, come to that particular one here uh, um, summary and closer that way we can let us see that whatever we have discussed so far in this uh, class and the thing is that uh, initially possibly we started with that we shall solve different problems, but I have thought of that one that problems will be given separately. So, that you can go ahead and go through it and you can have questions other things also um, like that and next thing is that. Um, but the basic principle, basic philosophy, basic idea that actually I tried to make it the bridge engineering a very, very uh, interesting course no doubt and it is a separate um, it is a very important also 
and uh, then and it has to be dealt in a different way because as I have told you the bridges are actually neck of the transporter system uh, and that as if all the information is going through that one if there is any problem that one if there is any kind of say deficiency then the whole system will deteriorate that is the whole idea regarding bridge engineering. So, coming to that one let us see whatever we have discussed so far because since, since this is the first course on bridge engineering um, that is one subset of that one and which are most common. So, that is why I thought that uh, I have given certain introduction because uh, simply starting from a middle it will not help you and it will not uh, get an idea. I have given one video that one for the different references and that I have given for the whole course on, on bridge engineering. So, that uh, you can understand that one that how we can actually go ahead, how we can actually think um, if you do not get an opportunity for uh, another course like that. Because the thing is that this is the one starting point reinforced concrete and then uh, we can have actually substructures and foundations separately, then we can have pistis concrete, then we can have steel bridges and then we can have um, steel concrete composite bridges, then cable supported bridges like say um, um, cable state bridge or suspension bridge and finally, bridge maintenance. So, I consider that bridge engineering under this part actually at IIT Kharagpur I am taking another course on bridge engineering which is one semester course and I have distributed that course in that fashion and which comes around say 60 hours out of 60 hours say 48 hours lecture and 12 hours uh, your tutorial that we consider here. So, coming to this particular one let us see uh, before going ahead uh, that one what are the things um, that we have covered. So, as I have told you earlier I have given general introduction to bridge engineering that uh, I have uh, given this particular one here the different aspects of that particular one we have given and this particular one uh, uh, you can take it actually that first part of the lecture that uh, first lecture itself allowing with the references that already uploaded um, you can consider that one these two can go together so that uh, you can get an idea about that bridge engineering what it means that uh, one we can consider here. Second one we can have that one I have told actually IRC loading general initially I thought of actually giving you euro code also, uh, but uh, anyway that uh, it will be uh, too much maybe because uh, I have tried to make in a slow space so that you can understand because the thing is that it is not the just only a numerical problem solving is the one that I would like to transfer my idea, my experience, my feelings about this particular course that on bridge engineering that is the idea. Because the thing is that if you understand the approach then you can go ahead with the problem on your own that, but the thing is that you should uh, uh, my objective that one that I would like to show you the avenue that yes there are so many paths which path you have to follow that is the main objective of this particular course in this 10 hours that I, I have tried to make it. So, IRC loading and general features of design which mainly covered under IRC 6 and IRC 5 general features of design regarding your say carriageway that your footpath then your say cash barrier, railing all those things what about the geometry that is given in IRC 5 um, that particular one then which is called section 1 and then IRC loading that is given impact loading other things that is given in IRC 6 that is called section 2 and this section 2 you are having here um, that your combination of loading also there that you can find out here and that is a very good book earlier it was IRC 6 now we are having 2014 that one very latest one and you can find out that uh, different combinations other things you can find out and which is closer to euro code and if you get the opportunity you go through the euro code also um, so that you can find out uh, that how the, the IRC actually taken up those things that you can find out. I shall take uh, give one problem which I have not covered here the shear that I have not told, but at least I shall solve show you one problem solving that one by in a um, that I shall supply um, so that you can go through that problem we can find out that slowly we shall give in the next two weeks that we can give that one when you will find out that. 
So, coming to this particular one here that basic principles of design codes are also discussed why we have discussed actually that most of the cases actually uh, they do not get any opportunity to do the reliability analysis, but modern codes with their uh, load resistance factor design that is the code actually followed that is based on certain principle of that you see reliability that reliability index the target reliability those things that is why I have taken exclusively that particular one here though it was uh, too tight within an half an hour, but I thought that it should be there. So, that you can understand uh, that uh, how that code actually making that gamma or different factors how they calibrate how they are coming to that 1.5 or 1.15 1.2 those values how they are coming that is the one and that is why I have referred one book also. So, that you can go through that particular one if you feel because as I have told you earlier this is the one that to show you that how that codes are actually developed. Working state method, limit state method of design are also discussed that is the because the thing is that uh, I could only refer that you go to that book all those things, but main objective that one that this is a 10 hours journey and whatever we require that I should touch and that is the main objective I have found actually in my first course in Beijing engineering whenever I taught then I, I actually thought that okay, then since they are having experience on your say um, reinforced concrete or steel design. So, let me refer those books and they will understand, but uh, the thing is that I have found it is miserable because the thing is that here uh, um, they somehow other they could not correlate between this bridge engineering and then your say that structural design. That is why I have tried to give that particular one here as I have told you in the last class also that those working stress method and the limited method considering say rectangular parabola section and only rectangular section in the limited method which is followed in IRC 112 both the methods are there and rectangular method that stress block actually extensively be used in IRC 112. So, that way you can and that I have shown you that one how it is useful that your position of neutral axis or position of rectangular block that or parabola box because it gives lot of uh, confusion or uh, problem in computation that is actually overcome with this rectangular block. Finally, we have discussed with the design of slab bridges and we have solved also problem that we have given numerical problem that we have given and various aspects of design of slab bridges we have uh, we have discussed here and then we have given that how to calculate effective width other things um, we have to calculate and then on the basis of that we have calculated bending moment, we have calculated shear force and then we can check that one though we have shown you with the working stress method, but again I shall supply that one with the other methods. Main objective is that you will find out that if you can understand that only different parameter changes only you will get the different values, but the basic principle in the structural design remains same in working stress method, limit state method on whatever whether you are which stress block you are considering whether parabolic rectangular or only rectangular it does not matter the basic principle is that compressive force equal to tensile force that is first one and moment of resistance due to steel moment of resistance due to concrete that one will be equal to compressive force times lever arm or tensile force times lever arm that is the one you will give you the moment for so far bending consider. Similarly, for shear force also shear stress that we take the uh, V and divide by B D that what we consider at support in RCCT beam at support we provide most of the cases we provide four legged and at the mid span or beyond certain range after say maybe say after 1, 1 meter 1.2 meter or 2.4 meter like that we can consider that we provide actually two legged stir up that is the one we provide that one generally we provide 12 millimeter dia or we provide 16 millimeter dia at 150 center to center 100 center to center depending on the situation you can find out. Why I am telling these numbers because you should at least you should know that at the time of design what it generally we provide because these are the standard bridges what we generally provide that also you should know. Next finally, we come to this particular one here various aspects of design of RCCT beam bridges that whatever we have discussed in the last few classes 
though we could not solve the problem in detail, but I have given that basic uh, insight of basic principles, but we shall um, give you that one, we shall submit to that one your say that complete solution of at least one bridge, so that you can understand that uh, different aspects, how to design that one say slab, how to design your say um, cantilever part, how to design the garter, how to calculate that with the simple method. You can try with the STAD or SAP or CSI bridge or MIDAS, whatever it is available to you or any other standard software, other software like say Abacus, ANSYS, other things also there are so many software available. With that also you can find out bending moment shear force providing the connectivity, geometry, coordinates, um, section, uh, section information and loading you can find out that your say um, bending moment shear force and then you can design it also you can do it. Finally, um, though I have given a separate video on that, but I should um, put it on record which books I have actually I have followed that there are plenty of other books available, but mainly whatever books I have followed that particular one that I have considered. So, this particular one here, sorry, first mistake this one said design of highway bridges, this one that mistake is highway bridges. LRFD um, that second edition, Essential of Bridge Engineering fourth edition by Johnson Victor. This is a very, very old book and very good book also. This book also very good that design of bridges, T.R. Jagdish and M.A. Joyram, Pentish of India, this by color here. I am sorry that on the first mistake that Y, in the, please uh, excuse me that Y here, it should be highway. And then Concrete bridge practice analysis design and economic one, the second edition, V. K. Raina. This is also a very good book. It is a very thick book, possibly in the second stage, whenever you go for your say you know, practicing engineer, you can do it. I thought that I should give you actually one uh, book on um, the reinforced concrete you know, that I should give it here. And this book actually I extensively use it nowadays, P. C. Vargis. So, that book we can use it. So, that is why I thought that in post concrete also that you can follow. There are many more books are available in the market and you can find out and all books are definitely good. And, but whatever I have followed only those books I have given, I am not biased, but at least uh, I have gone through it. The book which I have not gone through it, it is not wise to this one, because that is why I have given you the tower of books that those books are available and extensively I use it. Next part we are having here that IS 456 2000 that particular one fourth revision, IRC 5 that code which I have IRC 6 this 2014, IRC 112 2000 for concrete road bridges that particular one we can consider. So, these are the codes and IRC SP 105 2015 that explanatory handbook this also you can find out which is comes closer that one that explains the different aspect of IRC 112 that particular one here. So, these are the codes actually mainly we have used. So, uh, with this oh, I think that one that I have tried my best to um, give you my idea regarding bridge engineering and that possibly we could solve few more problems, but if you go through these books other things I hope that uh, you will be able to understand bridge engineering and you will be able to design. Um, bridges, particularly say reinforced concrete uh, road bridges, sh solid slab and your RCC T beam bridges, uh, you will be able to do it on your own. And with this, um, I finally uh, conclude this particular course. So, thank you very much.